Jesus name. Let us take a moment to appreciate God, the creator of heaven and earth. Give a wave of appreciation to the almighty God. No one has ever been able to replicate the masterpiece of his creation. Now, let us take a moment to appreciate you, who is made in the image and likeness of God. Tell your neighbor, you are a work of art. Tell them you are fearfully and wonderfully made. My people, you all are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now take a moment to appreciate the viewers all over the world. Give them a wave of appreciation. All our Emmanuel TV viewers. Yes, that is all that God wants from us is appreciation. You may be seated in his presence. Praise the Lord. Emmanuel. I want to take this opportunity to appreciate the man in the synagogue. in the Lord, who sacrificed his life to impart so much into my life, as well as many others all around the world. The first time that I ever preached during a Sunday life service on this very altar, Prophet TV Joshua walked me down the stairs over there that lead to the altar. When we got to the bottom of the stairs, he looked at me. And he gave me some fatherly advice, which I hold dear to my heart to this day, before he handed over the mic for me to preach the word of God. Sir, here I am again today. Thank you. <laughs> Truly, a million thanks are not enough for me to express my gratitude of what Prophet T.B. Joshua has done for my life. Years ago, when some of Prophet T.B. Joshua's disciples had gathered together with Prophet T.B. Joshua, the question was raised that how or who, which man could ever succeed Prophet T.B. Joshua, being such the great man of God that he is? This question was raised on three different occasions that I can remember that I was there. And each time, Prophet T.B. Joshua gave the same reply. He answered the question with a question. This was the question. How do you know it will be a man? It could be a woman. God and appreciate the woman he was referring to. Of course, as a man of the spirit, God had already revealed to him who that woman would be. The woman who has taken up the mantle, the woman in the synagogue. The woman who is continuing the legacy of prophet TB Joshua and driving this great mission forward in the name of mommy, Mrs. Pastor Evelyn Joshua. Yes, oh, yes, oh. From a father in the Lord to a mother in the Lord. What a perfect plan of God. Praise the Lord. Now before I go into my message, Evangelist um, Annette, just hold on before you go into your message. I know I'm just interrupting you. I'm really, really sorry. Um, Prophetess Yinka and Prophetess Anne, both of you have seen this lady in Synagogue Church of All Nations. She was your, your colleague when you guys were there. And it's not as if she she is forced to you know come back 
to Synagogue Church of All Nations, both of you can also willingly come back to say hi. No matter whatever that happened, keep it aside. Come to Synagogue Church of All Nations and prove to people that you are not hiding anything in your mind, that you're not bearing grudges by coming to Synagogue Church of All Nations to see the woman in the synagogue and also to stand on the same altar where you stood to be ordained a prophet. My sisters, Yinka and Anne, don't feel too big because this time around, it's not as if you are bigger than Annette. If Annette can come back and stood on the altar of liberty to preach, both of you can also do it. Okay? Both of you can do it. So take your time and we are expecting you guys to um, visit Synagogue Church of All Nations. Prophetess Yinka and Prophetess Ah, I take God back to two of you. I have used English. I have used, um, I'm using broken. I think at some point as well, I used Igbo. I'm just begging two of you. Take your time. Visit Scorn. We don't hate any of you. We don't hate you guys. What we are trying to do is to bring peace. Let there be peace. I know there is already peace. My people, let there be peace. Come to Synagogue Church of All Nations and people will be so delighted to see you guys. Um, I'd like to come out. If one of the ushers can help me to come out of the gate. I'm not quite sure which exit to take. I want to, actually, I want to hand something over. Somebody say hand something over. I know you all, all of you are thinking, what does she want to hand over? I have something in my hand. And I need two volunteers. One male, one female. Just to balance the equation. Okay. One male, one female. Mom, can we have you? Yes, sir. Okay, so... For the purpose of, the, oh, we also need a good cameraman, good scoring camera so you can get a good shot. Right, now I have in my hand with me a coin. Somebody say a coin. I'm going to hand over this coin to you, madam. And I want you to hold it up like this. Now it could be any coin, but it just happens to be a two pound British coin. Now you, sir, I want you just to stand there and look good. You are representing life. L-I-F-E. So today your name is life. I hope you don't mind. And today your name is coin. I hope you don't mind. Right. Okay, cameraman, I hope you have a good shot. Okay, I have a question for you, Madame Coin. Can you tell us how many sides there are to a coin? How many sides? It's one. How many sides are there to this coin? One. So that's one side. So there's one side to a coin. Two. Two sides to a coin. Are you sure? Yes. Don't be afraid to say you don't know if you don't know. It's two. Okay. Anybody dispute that? Anybody have any difference of opinion? So we have established that there are two sides to a coin. Okay. Gentlemen, can you just come to this side? Thank you. Life. I have a question for you. Don't be worried. <laughs> how many sides are there to you? I mean, how many sides are there to life? Several. Several sides to life? Yes. Don't be afraid to say you don't know if you don't know. Yes. So there are several sides to life? Yes. Okay, so we have a confirmed yes. Two sides to a coin, and our gentleman said there are several sides to life. Well, in my message, I'm going to answer those questions. But before I do that, have an opportunity to take some altar fruit and let us clap for them because they have been so wonderful. Yes, you can have your altar fruit and you can keep the coin. Now, in answer to the question, 
coin said that there are two sides to a coin, and life said that there are several sides to life. In answer to the question based on words of wisdom from Prophet TV Joshua, just as there are two sides to a coin, so there are two sides to life. First is the spiritual side, an ultimate conclusion where Satan was defeated. Second is the natural side, where people try to figure God out with their natural minds. Getting you to look at life, its storms and adversities, from the human point of view, is a trap of Satan. And this will take us to our proof text today. And we're going to be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And we're going to go to verse 18, first of all, and then verses 21 to 23. So the book of Matthew, chapter 16. Are you there? Praise the Lord. And I read. And I say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now let's go to verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from me, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Verse 23, and the last verse. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Praise the Lord. Peter was trying to figure Jesus out with his natural mind. With his natural mind. Someone say with a natural mind. But as we said, getting you to look at life from the human point of view is a trap of Satan. Praise God. Now at the time, Peter could not figure out why on earth Jesus Christ rebuked him. At a time when he was trying to protect his master from harm, rebuke wasn't what Peter was expecting at all. In one moment, he received praise. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. In another moment, rebuke. Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. But God used both praise and rebuke in the life of Peter because he knew that the two opposites were necessary to shape, to mold Peter's character for his God-given destiny and future glory. Little did Peter know that he was on God's beautiful journey. And this brings us to the title of today's message, God's Beautiful Journey. Someone say, God's Beautiful Journey. Yes, God's beautiful journey. Ask Peter, and he would tell you that a time of trouble is a time of self-examination. One way Christians' character grows is by facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. Facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. There is no lesson to be learnt in comfort. It is not anyone's wish to go through difficult times. It is not anyone's wish to go through trying times and challenges. But it may be God's will for you to get your destiny through them. Praise the Lord. God chooses what we go through. We choose how we go through it. In the book of Genesis chapter 37 and 39. Do you think that Joseph would have made it to the throne 
If he had harbored bitterness in his heart about the unfair treatment he received at the hands of his brothers and then in the hands of Pharaoh who put him in prison, although he was innocent, do you? No. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 8, do you think that Hannah would have had the promised child Samuel? If she had continued to cry and complain and groan to her husband instead of seeking the face of God? No. In the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 4, do you think that Peter would have experienced breakthrough in his fishing career and ultimately salvation if he did not humble himself and let down his net for a catch at the master's request? Do you? No. The situations and challenges you are going through as a child of God do not matter to Jesus Christ. What matters to Jesus Christ is how you handle them. Because how you handle them determines your future. Your difficulties, your challenges as a child of God. Remember, you are the apple of God's eye. Whatever your challenge that you are going through, no matter how difficult, do not despair. And do not give up. It is not time to quit. It is time to grab onto faith. You, the apple of God's eyes. God loves you so much. He prepared for you in advance before he put you in the fire of life. But if you want to become God's person, you must follow his processing. Someone say, follow his processing. The problem lies when we don't value the processing and we just want quick results. But our Father and the Lord Prophet TB Joshua advises us that we should value the processing more than the result. Praise the Lord. Your situation should not cause you to become sad or annoyed and angry and become, just develop a bad attitude towards life. You know, you have, see some people, they just have a bad attitude towards life. At least, if you can't control your circumstance, control your attitude. Prophet T.B. Joshua once said that a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't go anywhere until you change it. Praise the Lord. You know, sickness, poverty, disappointment, setback, failure are foolish things. But God may be using that very situation to qualify you qualify you for redemption, for a breakthrough, for a promotion, for your victory. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when you're going through difficult times, there are some people that as they are going through the difficult times, they are complaining, complaining, complaining. And at the same time that you're complaining, they are also reading the Bible and quoting scriptures. They will tell you what the Bible says concerning their situation. They'll say, the Bible says, the Bible says, by his wounds I am healed. Mm. Now why am I still sick? The Bible says, the Bible says my God has supplied all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Mm. Now why am I still poor? The Bible says, the Bible says, whom the Son of God has set free is free indeed. Mm. Mm. Then why am I still in this bondage? Children of God, no matter the situation you are going through, no matter how difficult it may seem, our God is faithful and true. A rock against which you can lean your faith 
even as the winds of sickness, poverty, disappointment, setback, failure, howl around you. But you must believe in that wonderful God. That wonderful God. That beautiful God on your beautiful journey. Praise the Lord. Just believe. Tell your neighbor, just believe. Just believe that you will get that job. Just believe that you will be healed of that sickness. Just believe that your deliverance will happen. Just believe that your business will begin to walk. Just believe that your career will do a U-turn. Just believe. Just believe. For without believing, you may never see it. are facing barrenness for so many years if you could only see the beauty in your journey and the love of God that says wait in faith and I will give you not just a child but a promised child you who are complaining in your place of work because someone is always getting promoted above you except you and you're thinking of quitting if only you could see that while you are busy thinking about quitting someone else is busy planning your promotion in the person of the Holy Spirit you who are sick in your body if only you could see the beauty in your journey that your sickness is not unto death it is not to hurt you it is not to destroy you it is not like others but it is for the glory of God praise the Lord do you believe how are you coping on God's beautiful journey in your life do you believe God the book of 2nd Corinthians 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says that as Christians we walk by faith we live by faith not by sight and 2nd Corinthians 4:18 tells us that we fix our eyes as children of God not on what is seen but what is unseen since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal. The things that keep us from not losing hope is not what we see, but what we cannot see yet believe. Sometimes answers to your prayers is delayed because God is not so concerned about your present state as your future. God is looking beyond now to your future. Praise God. Remember, in the book of Ecclesiastes 3.11, it tells us that in God's time, everything is beautiful. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before your throne. 